When you're introduced to control valves, you're usually told that valve size is defined by a number called the valve coefficient, and that valves can have different valve characteristics, namely linear, equal percentage, and fast opening. If you've never understood why you would ever pick an equal percentage valve over a linear one, well, that's what we're gonna look at today. Valve size is defined by a number called the valve coefficient or valve CV. The bigger the valve, the higher the CV. The higher the CV, the less pressure drop I will have because it is easier to get more flow through a bigger valve. When we describe a valve in terms of its CV, we usually refer to the CV when it is 100% open. But two valves can have identical CVs when they are fully open, but behave completely differently as they open up from 0% to 100%. A linear valve is simple. When a linear valve is 50% open, the CV is half of the valve CV when it is fully open. Equal percentage valves are different. In my last video, we looked at the equation for an equal percentage valve and saw that it is actually an exponential curve with a bit of a dodgy bit in the beginning because exponential curves do not pass through the origin. In other words, the zero, zero point, but equal percentage valves do. So we don't pay too much attention to this part of the graph and ignore the fact that it exists. Last time we also uncovered that it is possible to have multiple equal percentage valves with the same CV when they are 100% open and therefore that we need at least one other point to fully define the behavior of an equal percentage valve apart from the point when it is fully open. Fine, but why do we need equal percentage valves? They don't behave like this by accident. They are designed to act like this. Well, let's ask ourselves, what is it that valves do? If you are looking at the characteristic of a valve, it is because you are controlling something. Maybe it's flow, level, temperature, concentration. You could be controlling all sorts of things, but the valve doesn't know what it is that it's doing. It is simply opening and closing based on a signal from a controller, which is basically just a block doing maths. When you control, you want the response of your system to be linear in relation to the action that you take. Why? Well, because you want there to be proportionality between your action and its effect. If I am in the shower and I decide that the water is too cold, I turn the tap half a turn and I feel how much the water temperature increases. If I think, hmm, I want the water to increase the temperature by exactly the same amount, to have a nice and comfortable shower. Let me open another half a turn. I'll be seriously annoyed if the temperature skyrockets and I burn myself because all of a sudden the tap allowed a lot more water through. I expect the same increase in temperature of my shower water for every equal turn of my tap. Controllers on plants are similar in that their response is best when the same change in output signal produce the same response in the system. So our goal is a linear response in our system to an action that we take to manipulate it. So you may think, so obviously I want a linear valve as much as possible because that valve behaves exactly the way we've just described. Well, yes and no. The valve characteristic is linear if you look at the valve by itself, say on a bench connected to absolutely nothing else. But when we install that valve on a system, it will respond totally differently. Let us pretend we have a two kilometer horizontal pipeline with a nominal diameter of four inches. My intention is to pump 30 tons or 30 cubic meters of regular water through this pipeline every hour we are able to draw a system curve for this pipeline. The system curve describes how much pressure drop the water will experience when flowing through this pipe as a function of flow. You want a higher flow rate through the pipe, you will need more pressure to push it through. 
If you want to know how to generate this curve, check out my video handling this topic, which also contains a link to the sheet that I used to do it. We see that to push 30 tons of water per hour through a 2 km 4 inch pipe, we need just over 2 bar worth of pressure at the start of the pipe. That's basically the pressure inside a regular car tire. Cool. I go give this to the pump supplier and they sell me a pump. It has a pump curve that looks as follows. The intersection of these two points is how much flow I will get. You can see that instead of 30 tons per hour, I will get 40 tons per hour, which is great because I want there to be a little bit of excess capacity, but since I only want 30 tons per hour, I can install a valve to throttle the flow and control it at a constant 30. How big is this valve? So let us consider three different valve sizes. We will pick them so that they represent a specific percentage of total system pressure drop when they are fully open. 10, 25 and 40 percent of total system pressure drop. We start with the assumption that the valves all have linear characteristics. Let us start with the linear valve that is 10% of the total pressure drop. In other words, the biggest linear valve because it has the lowest pressure drop. Here I have updated the system curve to include the pressure drop of the valve in blue. This is when my valve is fully open. Now let's watch how the system curve changes as we increase the valve opening from 0 to 100%. The flow we get at a specific valve opening is still represented by the intersection of these two lines. Can you see how much the curve moves in the first 50% of the valve opening? You can see that the opening from 0 to 50% has a much larger impact on flow than moving from 50 to 100% open. Remember, this curve is being generated for a linear valve characteristic. If I record every intersection point of these two curves and plot the flow I get at that intersection against valve opening, I can get a very nice curve for flow through my system as a function of valve opening. Can you see that this is far from being a linear response? This curve is known as a valve's installed characteristic, meaning this is how it behaves when it is installed on a very specific piping system with a very specific pump. And it looks very different to the valve's inherent characteristic, which is what you would get from the supplier. The valve supplier can only give you the inherent characteristic because they know nothing about the system where you will install your valve. I have repeated the exercise for the two smaller linear valves, in other words the valves that represent a higher percentage of total system pressure drop. You can see that by using a smaller linear valve I get closer to that linear performance that I'm after. But this comes at a cost. I will incur higher operating costs because this valve is 40% of the total pressure drop of my system. And have a look. It may be closer to looking linear, but the valve only just gets me my desired 30 tons per hour when it is fully open, meaning I will have a valve that needs to run at 100% opening and any blockages in my system will mean that I cannot run at my design capacity. It would be a poor choice to select this valve. We do this exercise again, but this time we use an equal percentage valve characteristic. Remember. The valve CVs when they are fully open are identical to the linear valves we've just used, but the behavior is different as they open. I have set it up so that I get 50% more CV for every additional 10% opening for these equal percentage valves. Once again, we start with the largest of the three valves, which gives the smallest total system pressure drop of 10%. I've gone through the exercise of tracking the intersection point of the curves as the valve opens from 0 to 100% and the curve I obtain looks as follows. I know what you're thinking, the line looks a bit wonky and it's not as nice and smooth as the curves we had for the linear valves. But that's not the important part. We are after getting something that is as close as possible to the theoretical straight line. 
and you can see that the equal percentage valve does a much better job of doing this. Not only this, but if we look at the two other smaller valves, we can see that using a smaller valve with a higher pressure drop has no benefit and gets us further away from the linear behavior. This is the opposite to what we saw with the linear valve. In the linear valve, we could use a smaller valve and pay a higher price and pressure drop to get closer to linear behavior. But we would also get a lower system capacity. The equal percentage valve is great because the one that gives us the best response, the most linear one, is also the one with the lowest pressure drop. So this is a two-in-one benefit. Better linear behavior and lower pressure drop. This is where we use equal percentage valves. When the system we are working on has a large pressure drop, for example, a very long pipeline, we use equal percentage valves to smooth out our installed characteristic and get a linear response from our controller. So a typical rule of thumb is that if I am installing a linear characteristic valve, as a minimum, that valve should represent 25% of the total system pressure drop. If I am installing an equal percentage valve characteristic, the valve should, as a minimum, have 10% of the total system pressure drop. These rules of thumbs exist to get you as close as possible to a linear response without knowing anything about your system. The sheet I use to do all these calculations and generate all these plots can be found in the link in the description. The thing to note after this is that valve CV and valve characteristics are picked very early on, as early as basic engineering in any project. And so what that means is you can't go into these rigorous calculations the way we've done because usually you don't know geometry to the, ex to the extent that we knew it here. So that's why you rely on not only previous experience but also rules of thumb to know what sort of characteristic and how much the valve should be oversized for that specific application. One other thing is that while I had the luxury of being able to define the valve CV to represent exactly 10, 25 and 40% of my total system pressure drop, you're not going to have that luxury in real life because you're going to have a vague idea of what that CV should be. You're going to go to a valve supplier and they're not going to have a specially made valve just for you that has your exact CV. They're going to give you one that's one, the next size up to be able to, to meet your capacity needs. 